Hi everyone, thank you for joining me at Tamit Saleh's Tennis Forum and welcome to this week's episode of Tennis Tuesday. Now, I release videos every Tuesday discussing relevant topics in the tennis world. I appreciate that today's video may come out for some of you guys living in the uh, States on a Monday evening simply because I wanted to get this video out before the second round of the Shanghai uh, Masters 1000 takes place. Living in the UK, these matches are happening at around 5, 6 a.m. in the morning. So I wanted to release it. But yeah, it might be a Monday, mon Monday evening for you guys, but it is Tennis Tuesday. In this video, I wanted to discuss quite a quite an interesting topic, which is our first round buys unfair. Now, you know that the top eight players in the world in the Masters 1000 tournaments, they don't need to play the first round. They go straight into the second round. And I just wanted to discuss the pros and cons and let you guys decide if it's unfair or not. If you want to check out my last video, which I focused purely on the Shanghai Open draw, uh, then I'll be putting a link to that up here somewhere and also in the description below. If you haven't already, please do subscribe as I do release weekly tennis videos and additional content as well during the big tournaments. I think this week I've released like three or four videos. So as you can see, I'm very passionate about tennis and you guys are too. So it's a privilege for me to have people like you on my channel. But yeah, without further ado, let's roll the intro. So this is a topic that spouts up every time the Masters 1000 takes place and it is our first round buys unfair. Now personally I'm of the opinion that it's a good idea and a good system and it protects the the top 8 players but I can see arguments for and against this this motion. As you know, the top eight players do not play the first round and they go straight into the second round of the draw. So on a Monday, all the first round matches and sometimes the Tuesday as well, they're taking place while the top eight rest. <laughs> and then, then the, from the second round, everyone is involved. Personally, I can see why tournaments do this because as tournament directors, you really want the top players in the world playing in your tournament. So if I was a Shanghai Open director, I would want the likes of Novak Djokovic, Rafael Nadal, Roger Federer, Daniil Medvedev, all these top eight players. I want them in my tournament simply because the top eight players bring the majority of the audience in. I'm sh like, this is no disrespect to any of the the lower ranked players but let's be honest people are more inclined to watch the big three play or the the top players play rather than the world number 100 versus the world number 120 like that's just just facts for me the system seems like the top eight players have deserved this slight preferential treatment but at the same time this can be used as a uh, con in in this in this argument because there shouldn't be any preferential treatment the the people that may think this is unfair the arguments they're using is the fact that every player should play the same amount of matches now it doesn't matter if you're the world number one or the or the, or the world number 100 you should be playing the same number of matches to win the top prize the the field should be as equal as possible in terms of who plays what therefore so like for instance if Roger Federer comes in in the second round but the person he's meant to face if they've had a grueling three hour three and a half hour match in the first round they may be extremely fatigued and I wouldn't be surprised to play Roger Federer and let's be honest even if you're a hundred percent fit it's going to be hard for them anyway but yeah it's not equal in, in in the sense that the bigger players seem to be getting an extra rest and they don't have to play that that extra match really another counter to that is that most likely the top eight players they're the ones that have deep runs in the tournament so they're reaching the quarterfinals the semi-finals and the finals so having the first round off is is it doesn't really make any difference because they'll still play five six matches perhaps rather than say for instance a world number 60 playing the first round second round and at best maybe the third round and then crashing out more often than not obviously you have your outliers and exceptional results but generally the case is the top eight players they're going further into the tournament another reason the top eight players do get that first round by is because a lot of the masters uh, 1000 tournaments take take place back to back so for, for instance like on a, on a lesser scale you have indian wells followed by miami the following week 
But the real extreme cases is basically Madrid and Rome, which is back to back week one Sunday and then Monday the next tournament starts. And then also Canada, Cincinnati, which is back to back. So within two weeks, two tournaments, big tournaments are taking place. Therefore, if if for instance Rafael Nadal, who won Canada this year, he's playing up to up to Sunday, which is when the final takes place, you can't really then expect him to play Cincinnati on a Monday to play the first round. Therefore, it just makes sense to have it on, on, on a Tuesday, which will be his second round match. Likewise, for instance, we just had Novak Djokovic, who's won Tokyo. His match was on a Sunday. He's playing on a Tuesday. But if he had to play the first round, uh, first round match, he would have maybe had to play on Monday, which means, obviously, Novak Djokovic isn't going to skip Shanghai, so he would have had to skip Tokyo. So it's not just a case of two Masters 1000 taking place back to back. It's a case of even ATP 500 and so on. They happen thick and fast in the world of tennis. Another reason it may help the unseeded players is they won't get a horror draw in the first round. So no one wants to come into the first round and they face one of the big three straight away. They, they might as well like... In no disrespect, but they might as well book their flights back home. So it just ensures that the first round, there's no horror draws and it's quite, it, it's achievable for anyone really to, to win on a good day. An example of that for, for that would be Andy Murray, for instance. He, he's unseeded. He could have played anyone in the first round. But because the top eight went there, he, it, just, it just means that players like that can go further on. And then from the second round on, everyone is here. It also makes achieving the top eight more attractive to players so rather than being stuck at 9 16 or 13 somewhere in that region in the world it's better to be a top eight player and finally for me i feel like it keeps the grand slams unique masters 1000 the final before used to be a best of five now everything is a best of three and the best of five sets for the men's at least is only reserved for the the grand slams and well the davis cup but in terms of these individual high tournaments, it is only the Grand Slams. I feel like it keeps it unique. It means in Grand Slams, everyone is playing the same amount of matches, etc. And yeah, like I've said, no one's going to skip a Grand Slam, but they may skip a Masters 1000. And as a tournament director, you don't want that. That's just my opinion on the matter. Please do leave a comment what you think on is it unfair or it's, it's a good system that tennis employs. Just to round up this video, I'll just quickly update you guys on Shanghai. We had the opening day today and the big shock from that day is, of course, uh, Marin Cilic is out of uh, Shanghai Open first round. We were expecting a mouth-watering tie between Cilic and Federer in the second round. That is not going to happen. Instead, Federer will play against uh, Ramos Vinoles. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Andy Murray has also won his first Masters 1000 match since 2017. He won the first round against Londero. He did lose the opening set, but then he came back strong, winning the second and third comfortably. And he has set up a second round match against Fonini. That, for me, will be a massive test for him. I still don't expect Andy to win that match, uh, simply because... Yeah, I just don't think he's up to that level yet. But it will be a very interesting match, and one that I'm going to try wake up extra early uh, to watch. But I'll, I'll definitely catch the highlights of it. Andy Murray, Fonini, second round. Shapovalov has also beaten Tiafu, comfortable straight sets. So he has set up a uh, second round match against Novak Djokovic. And the only seeded player to fall in the opening day was uh, Diego Schwartzman. He lost to Pospisil. So now the real big hitters are coming into action. I've said it in my previous video why the Shanghai Open is so important, especially to Novak Djokovic. He is world number one and winning Tokyo last, uh, last Sunday means that even if he loses in his opening match against uh, Shapovalov, he will still retain the number one ranking as he is more than a thousand ahead of Rafa. In terms of the race, he is about one and a half thousand. I think it's 1,450 points behind Nadal. Rafa not playing due to injury, so this is a golden opportunity for Novak Djokovic to claw back some of that deficit. And personally, I really hope that it goes down to the final match, a bit like 2016 between Djokovic and Murray. So this year, I wanted to go down to the final match in London for the World Tour Finals. Novak Djokovic versus Rafa Nadal, winner 
takes the year end number one and the number one rankings as I have got tickets for that match. I've bought it yesterday, so I'm very excited. Keep an eye out because I do plan to get some good footage over there, maybe do some interviews with people uh, on like on, on finals day. So that will be a really interesting one personally for myself as well. As always, I appreciate all the support you guys have given me. Please do leave a comment below. I do respond to most, if not all all of your comments um, yeah we have some great debates in the comment section i do love it and if you haven't already please do subscribe for the weekly videos and if you've enjoyed my content give it a thumbs up thank you very much game set and match game set and match